Welcome to the Swirl Suite, everybody. Happy Wine Wednesday. Before we get started with the podcast, I'd like you to know that the Swirl Suite was nominated for the 2021 Taste Awards. So we were nominated in two categories, Best Lifestyle Podcast and Best Food or Drink Radio Broadcast. We really appreciate your votes. I will put the link in the description box. The link is also in our Instagram bio. And uh, wish us luck. This episode of The Swirl Suite, we talk to veteran sommelier, wine director, champagne master candidate, the Dom, Tanya Pitts. Outside of that, of this world, right? Do you still feel that I, I... I need to dummy myself down or not dummy myself down, but hold back. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say necessarily hold back. Mm -hmm. People don't expect you to be as knowledgeable or speak well, you know, and all of that. Sometimes they don't expect you to speak eloquently and get your point across. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, I'm educated, you know, I went to college, I know how to talk to people, you know, it's, but that's how people are, you know, they expect you to be a certain kind of way, completely stereotypical. Which is, it's not, you know, it's not surprising. Okay, well, you still get people that, you know, you'll walk up to a table and, oh my God, you're a woman and you're black. (laughs) <laughs> you know so you turn I turn it into a joke especially when I'm busy I don't got time you know I gotta move gotta go exactly oh you know well there's a first time for everything and yes I am and what would you like tonight you know especially if I'm busy I don't you know yeah but I'm allowed to do that because I've been where I've been for a long time in that particular well that's why I was going to ask you I mean some people wouldn't be comfortable doing that at all you know no that's why I that was the other thing that's why I really asked you the question because you're very established in your field and your reputation precedes you in a good way so even now I'm surprised and I shouldn't be, I, I really shouldn't be, you know, I don't know what, <laughs> what day, what twilight zone I'm in, but I guess, you know, Becky Sue coming off the street, she don't know. She well, should know, and, and, and but she think, doesn't know. And, and the other thing is people, I mean, because I've done this for decades, more than two. And so you would think that having seen me within all the press and it's not like I've been, you know, under a rock, you know, mm-hmm. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm around, people know, you know, I'm here and all of that, but it's, it for the longest time has been an anomaly to see women and also people of color. We are, have been far few and in between, but that's all changing. That is all changing. And now we actually know where we all are, you know, because unless you travel and get around, you don't know who's where, right? Mm -hmm. Unless you happen to meet somebody and they're like, hey, you know, there's this African-American sommelier who's in Texas or in Houston or in New York or in Arizona, because we are, we're everywhere, right? And the one thing about everything that's happened, now we know where we all are Mm -hmm. because there are, um, there's a place to find all of us as well. And Mm -hmm. so you will see more of us doing things because it's been brought to the forefront. You know, there's black wine professionals that people can use as a tool um, and a resource to be able to find us. But then there's also (laughs) <laughs> this, that have just been put online, period, that have been circulated in social media mm-hmm. and everything else. And it's not just people that are sommeliers in restaurants. You all, for instance, the podcasts that you do, writers, everything. 
you know, there's, there's a directory of sorts for all of us that are in this field and various things that we do, whereas we didn't have that before. That's something that has been, you know, brought to the forefront and almost kind of forced in a way, but it needed to happen. You know? It did. It and you know, it's, it's, it's crazy that we've been doing this for five years. Exactly. It's a long time. Yeah. And there's still people who are in the wine industry that have never seen or heard about us. I just got an email this week. How long have you guys been doing this? <laughs> I guess I've been under the rock. Yeah, you have. You ain't had to come from under that rock. So yeah, yeah. we're here. We've been here. Yeah. Exactly. All of us have. Yep. Yeah. Crazy. I actually ended my um, my talk on Sunday, no, Saturday, um, and I did, I said that when I started my talk, we are here and we've been here. The, you know, world and wine world has just been slow and catching up and catching on, but that's rapidly changing, you know, and it's going to continue to be that way. And that's how I opened up my session. Hmm. So, well, well, that was an introduction, man. Girl, I gave it yeah. to him. <laughs> <laughs> gave it to him. <laughs> <laughs> so, for those who have been under rocks, um, Tanya, please tell us um, who you are, what you do, and like, I don't know if I know your background wine story, like how you got into wine in the first place. Oh gosh, it's uh, if you told me. Um, over 30 years ago that this is what I was going to be doing, I would have said, no, you know, I'm going to law school. I'm going to become a lawyer. Um, was in a pre-law program, actually. And in the midst of all of that, had always been an artist and loved art and started spending more time in the studio. And um, art was my minor and completely switched gears. My parents were not happy. My family was not happy with me at all, you know? Um, and I had been working um, as a host in a French restaurant in the Central West End in St. Louis, which is where um, I'm from. And um, well, first of all, as I'm diving into all of this, my name is Tonya Pitts, and <laughs> I am a sorry sommelier and <laughs> wine director in uh, San Francisco, California. Um, I have been at the helm of one market restaurant and running the wine program there for 13 years. I am a veteran in the industry. I have spent many decades uh, doing what I do. And um, in San Francisco, um, working in restaurants in St. Louis as well. And I got my start in St. Louis, um, working in the Central West End at a French restaurant. And, you know, I was one of those young people who had been in Upward Bound mm. um, when I was in high school. And so I would spend my weekends at St. Louis University. And so I met all the older students Mm -hmm. And so when it was time for me to start, you know, as a freshman, they were like, hey, you know, we're going to go work at this restaurant in the Central West End. You should come. It's going to be a lot of fun. You're going to, you know, make some money and meet some people. And it was just going to be cool, right? So I'm like, okay. You know, and I go, I fill out my application. Never worked in a restaurant before, right? Um, have gone out to eat and things like that, but had never been around food and wine that kind of way. Wine wasn't on the table um, in our house either. You know, you were looking at uh, brass monkey. You know, <laughs> you were looking at um, E and J brandy. Mm -hmm. You were looking at you know Crown Morgan Royal. David Crown <laughs> Royal. You know things like that, right? And so. When I started working at this restaurant, I got hired as a host and, you know, over time worked my way up to being a supervisor. This was all while I was um, in school, but the wild thing was they had family meal at the end of the night. Mm -hmm. And so I got to try the food anyway, because I got to eat, but the big thing was family meal and everyone sitting down at the end of the night.
and having food together and there was wine on the table and hearing people talk about what was in their glass, I couldn't drink because I was underage mm -hmm. and people say, well, did you like sneak and, and have something? And I didn't because of the way the restaurant was made, there were these huge picture windows mm -hmm. and it looked right out onto the street. I couldn't have done that if I wanted to, right? But, you know, I sat there and listened to everybody else talk and drink and eat. And then I would swirl and smell. And over time, they realized that I had a palate from the descriptors that I was given. And Ooh. that led one thing to another and mentoring me. Um, mm. My mentor and the people that worked there, it was all, you know, a mixture of different people because Wendy's friends came from all over the country to help her with that project. She had spent 10 years in Provence and had come home to St. Louis to open this restaurant. So her friends came from all over the country to help her. White people, black people, there were black people in the kitchen. You know, it's just, it was multicultural that way. And my first mentor was, um, a black man who had worked all over the country and Matthew was wonderful. At that point, I had no idea that that's what he was doing with me. He had taken me under his wing and was teaching me about food and wine and restaurants, you know? And it wasn't really until recently as I thought about my story and my journey, um, in the pandemic and people asking me and talking about it that I realized it was actually because of Matthew and Matthew taking the time and the energy to put that within me that I even had the spark and the drive to even to get to where I am, you know, but I just saw restaurants as a means and a way to make money. It was not my intention to spend my life doing this at all, you know? And I was in college, you know, in university and restaurants was just, it was my, my money, you know? That's all that was. It was not looked at as a career for me. And when I moved to San Francisco, I left St. Louis because I had decided to switch gears and go to art school. <laughs> so <laughs> I uh, came here with the intention of going to California uh, College of Arts and Crafts. Because I was not a resident, I had to wait a year. Oh. So what did I do? You know, we couldn't get financial aid, you know. So I went and got myself a job in a restaurant. And when I realized that that's how it was going to be, I actually researched restaurants in the area and figured out where I wanted to work. And those are the places that I um, applied to. And um, my first place I went into was Zuni Cafe. Tell you how green I was. I went on a Monday. They were closed for inventory. The door just happened to be open because it was a hot day. And the wine director was there, Sylvie, Sylvie Dar, and they had this huge bar and the liquor was back behind the bar. She had to get on a ladder to count, right? Came down, looked at my resume and had a conversation with me. We talked for maybe about an hour and a half. At the end of it, she told me what to wear and what to bring and she hired me. Mm -hmm. And that was my start and my beginning which is not typical, you know, at all. But I will say during that time, you saw all kinds of people working in restaurants, mm -hmm. um, all kinds of, you know, ethnicities working in restaurants. And it was more of a, more of a kaleidoscope, I think, even more so than you see now. Sometimes I think that we've gone backwards. I agree. And, you know, and when I was having the conversation with 
uh, Tom Matthews from Wine Spectator, you know, and the reason that I did that whole thing with them during the summer was because of the conversation that we had. He had come from restaurants and he understood and he got it, you know, because everybody worked in restaurants. You know, you had, you know, waiters, maitre d's, they were people from all, from everywhere, from anywhere, you know? And so that's why I think that we had gone backwards and now we're trying to play it forward, you know, again. But I always say, if you don't see yourself, how do you know that that's something that you can do, right? Yeah. Um, and I think for me, that was probably one of the biggest challenges for me deciding if I really wanted to do this right you know it was the first thing you think of minorities okay women are minorities not a lot of women then you look at being black then you look at other minorities Asian Latino whatever they weren't really there and so my biggest thing for me was deciding if I wanted to continue and go down this road knowing that it was not going to be easy and it was going to be difficult and there was going to be some um, adversity because of not seeing the minorities, you know, that are being there because they weren't really there. Not, not really, they weren't there. Um, my first tasting I went to, I'll never forget, <laughs> I walked in there was myself as a black person, one other black man there. And the women that were in the room were not tasting. They were all kind of congregated in the middle of the room with their wine bags, um, with their colored matching suits on, you know, matching <laughs> mini skirt and jacket. I'm dating myself on this one. <laughs> and they were not tasting, you know, at all. And I was like, okay, well, this is interesting. And I was like, okay, I'm just gonna go and dive in. And I went and got my glass and, you know, was trying to muscle my way in to, to get a taste. And it was hard, it was difficult because the seas were not, you know, <laughs> were not parting for me to get in there to taste. And it wasn't until my mentor showed up and that's when the seas parted. And that's opened. crazy. And, you know, mm -hmm. and I, you know, it's even for me now, it's one of the biggest things when I walk into a room, is that going to happen to me? Mm -hmm. Are people going to treat me that way? And it's not just me. I hear it from other people even now. Mm -hmm. That's what happens. Mm -hmm. You know, when people go into a tasting room, it's not that warm and welcoming feeling either you know, what we deem as being hospitable, you know, no matter who anyone is, when they walk into a space, you are to be warm and welcoming, right? right? Hospitality, yeah. Yeah. period, no matter who walks in the door, right? Exactly. So, you know, in the midst of all of that, um, I started working at uh, Star's Restaurant with Jeremiah Tower, I actually met them while I was working at Zuni. And uh, I never forget, I came home and my roommate's like, they've seen you. I was like, who's seen you? What are you talking about? The crew at Stars, Jeremiah and Brian and all of them, they, they really like you. They want you to come and work at Stars. And I said, well, you know, I really like working at Zuni, you know, but I'll go stage and I'll go hang out, check it out, see what it's like, right? And I did that for a couple of days and I really liked it. So I asked if I could work at both restaurants, <laughs> which they did, There's the chefs they shared me. And so I worked at both restaurants, which for two high profile chefs like that, you, it's either you work at one place or you work at the other, you don't work at both. But I was allowed to work at both and I did that um, for a long time. And it was really when I got the stars where it was really busy, it was really bustling. And we would have these powwows, things would get opened and, you know, they pull key people and say, hey, meet in the wine room right now. 
and they would process the wine and we would have a chance to smell, taste, talk, just like that. And then we were all back out on the floor. And so that's another way that I learned. But again, had never thought of this for myself, right? And it wasn't until I started working at Bijou Restaurant with Loretta Keller, whom I had met at Stars, and she left there and she went to open up her own restaurant and she needed some help. And she's just like, I'm giving you the wine program and I know you can do it. And I'm like, what are you talking about? She's like, I need some help. And you're not supposed to be a captain. You're supposed to be a sommelier and you can do this. And that's how that happened. And so. I'm sorry, what is a captain? A captain is someone who is on the floor that is as a weight person Mm -hmm. that runs the floor and runs sections. And, you know, that's your point person who takes care of everything for you. And there are people that work underneath them, you know, but, you know, I was always the person that people came to for wine questions. Would you go and talk to those people? Would you please go sell them some wine? Oh my Lord, I don't want to talk to anybody. You can do it. They're difficult. <laughs> I'm just like, <laughs> oh, okay, sure, right? And so that's how that started, you know? And not having any credentials, you know, whereas people don't realize there was a time where we didn't have the court or WSET here in this country. Those are all, you know, European mm-hmm. um, institutions. And so when they did come to the United States, there was this, this push and this drive to get people, you know, certified and, and on board that way. And before they arrived and came to the country, you had to send your application to England and you had to prove that you were working in a restaurant wow. and as a professional and all of that. And they would send you a list of books, you know, to read and publications and things like that. You got yourself a mentor and you just started working away at that. Oh. And when you thought that you, you know, were ready, you then you know, applied, you know, to take your test and sit. But in the beginnings, you had to go to England to do that. So, Interesting. yeah. So when I did this, I was a part of that wave of people and getting people certified here in the United States. Hmm. And, um, but yeah, I wasn't sure if I wanted to do it, you know, because of that, because of their not, being enough within the minorities of people. My turnaround was being given an opportunity to take the test. Someone had put my name in for a scholarship and it was on days off. It was in the city in my hometown. And I just looked at it and I said, all right, God, I'm listening. I understand. I get it. And that's, that's when the certification happened, because I actually worked for years without any of that, you know, and there's still people that operate that way to this day, they just don't, they just don't have it, they just didn't get certified or do any of that. You know, there's some people that are really adverse to the whole thing, period, right? Um, But yeah, that's how that started. And the beat goes on. And here I am, (laughs) you know, yeah. Here so you are like an incredible storyteller and you have like this way with words and people like that's a gift that everybody does not have, especially in the wine world. Like, so how did you know, was it like working at restaurants where you realized that you were good at m- one people and communicating with people and the wine? Well, you know, I remember I wanted to be a, a lawyer. Mm -hmm. I, that's what I thought for the longest time that I wanted to do. Um, Since I was really very young, I thought that that's what I wanted to do. And I did debating. Um, I did a lot of, um, oh gosh, um, debating. I did um, 
speech and all of that. And I was really very good at it. So you were doing, remember when you did speech, you were doing role playing. Mm -hmm. You had no props. You were telling a story and bringing a person right there to where you were at that moment and creating this imagery. And I was really very good at that. And um, so I think part of that and being able to do that, um, plus being an artist um, as well. And I think I also realized when you are working with the public and working with people and particularly in restaurants, you have to be a different person for each person that is in front of you. And that's something that I realized and I learned, and that is what I do. You know, you are a chameleon, more or less. You know, the restaurant and that industry is a stage and it is your stage and it is your party, it is your performance. And everyone that's coming in to see you, that's what they're there for. And so when I have people in front of me, I can look at them, you look at body language, all of that, and the way someone speaks to you, and you know what sort of tone you need to have with them when you're talking to them and getting ready to strike up a conversation. And I'm never pushy when I'm on the floor and, and selling wine. I just, I just don't do that. You know, it, it doesn't work. And I listen to what people have say what they're eating or drinking and I ask questions like that you know what are you interested in this evening if you would like some assistance let me know I'm never just diving right in because there's some people that don't want to talk to you mm -hmm. for whatever reason and that's okay too and I go on to the next person you know and there's someone there that wants my assistant <coughs> and wants me to help them and wants me to be a part of their experience you know, hmm. and so, so that's what I do, you know, oh. and it's always been this sparkle in someone's eye when you've given them something and poured something for them and it's delicious and they love it and they dig it. And then when they have it with food, it's that aha moment, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I also love teaching people, you know, about food and wine as well, but you have to use, I don't like to use the word plain language, but you have to speak to people in a way that it resonates mm -hmm. with them and that they understand, right? right? So when we talk about this a lot, language, when you're smelling wine, what I've always told people, you know, my staff, customers, whomever, whatever you smell in that glass, go with it because that is your sensory memory, yes. mm -hmm. period. Yeah. Exactly. That is yours, that is unique. No one else has that. Mm -hmm. So what you are smelling from that moment is what's in the glass because that is your sensory memory. That's all it is. And it's just the Rolodex of, right. of senses and memory. That's what that is. Yeah. And it's unique to every person. And it's not necessarily what, is listed on the back of a wine bottle mm -hmm. are in tasting notes. You know, for some people that's completely cryptic. They don't understand <laughs> that. Well, I don't know. And then they smell it. Oh, okay. This smells like blueberry pie or this smells like apple pie or this, this tastes like a caramel apple, right? But even sometimes the tasting notes, so sometimes I will read tasting notes and then try the wine and I'm like, okay, who wrote this? Exactly. There's, <laughs> like, that, who, too. There's who, that too. Who did you hire to write this? Because it doesn't taste like anything. Mm -mm. Yeah. They must have been drinking this on uh, a root day. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you know, because I don't get none of that. Uh, I don't know, you know. <laughs> dried bramble and earth exactly girl what <laughs> <laughs> speaking okay. of wine i saw your glass what, what is everybody drinking tonight um i have the leftovers of a um estate agros 
um, Assertico from Santorini, mm. 2016. And um, I opened a little bit, well, I opened it up last night because I was studying last night and towards the end, I was talking to a friend and I'm like, okay, this has just been so stressful. And I've just like stressed myself out. I might have some wine. What are you studying? I am studying for, um, well, I'm studying a couple of different things. Last night, it was me going over all the notes in web conference for Spanish wine specialist. Mm -hmm. And so, and it's all, it's a new thing. It's only the second time that they've done it. And you are actually in a class with people from all over the world, but it's based out of Spain. And so, yeah. So, yes. wow. <laughs> so I'm sitting here and I'm going through everything because this is like the first kind of live uh, class that we had. The first we didn't have class, we were just going through the module and getting comfortable with it. And so that's what I was doing last night and reading all the material and just thinking, dear Lord, this is, they said, anywhere from two to eight hours a week. I'm like, well, this, this webinar is seven hours, you know, Wow, <laughs> that's not right. But then after I listened to the, um, after I listened to the web conference, they were like, oh no, some of that is just for your own edification for you to like, look at, read later. I'm like, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> like, I was like, I don't know how I'm gonna do all this. <laughs> and then everything else that I'm doing, you know, I'm also um, got a scholarship through uh, Black Wine Professionals for the Champagne Masters. Oh, nice. And so I'm studying yeah. that as well. And so I'm just thought, well, I just loaded my little self up here. And then I'm doing an intensive on Israeli wine, which Whoa. it's not for a certificate or anything. It's just for just knowledge, right? And learning more about it. So, but that's good though, you know, because you never stop learning yeah. just when you think mm-hmm. you know it all, which we never know it all, right? Not at all. So that whole thing has been fun because we can't travel. We can't go nowhere. We can't do nothing, right? Mm, yeah. All we can do is live vicariously through food and wine at this point. Yeah. And exactly. pictures. Yeah, I've started pretty um, much. Uh, I've started matching my wine with my my TV programs. <laughs> 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 I love that. <laughs> so I um so I've been in Italy for like the last month or so and re-watching uh Rocco Scovone. Mm. ice cold cases which is all set <laughs> in Valle de Osta I'm all like okay I'm, I'm gonna pretend I'm there I'm gonna go <laughs> have me some, some wine from some white wine red wine from Valle de Osta and just dream right because <laughs> they're not really showing the vineyards it's really the countryside and the people and because that's all kind of ski territory and stuff as well but I'm fine with it because they go to Rome <laughs> and everything else I'm like okay I'm here hi y'all <laughs> Alexa, play D'Angelo. Hear music the way the artist intended, with unlimited access to 70 million songs in HD. Elevate your sound with the highest quality streaming audio. New subscribers only. Podcast now streaming. Unlimited skips. Alexa voice controls. Any songs, anywhere. Use the link in our description box to get your free trial for Amazon Music today. Cheers. We're all learning. And see, and I have to say this, there's something, <laughs> Big there's something for everybody. You're and right. That's I true. was in a room on Clubhouse and this, these trying. people were talking about fruit wine. And mm. people were just like, oh my God, uh, you know, just dogging it out. And I'm like, well, I judge. And that is one of the categories. It and is. It sure is. Is. Mm-hmm. And we don't see the labels. We don't see the bottles. You judge it for what it is. It is a is it a good, balanced example of what it's supposed to be, mm-hmm. and that is what yeah. you're looking at. This and that's, is and I said, is there something for everybody? Yeah, it's it's a place artists. in Maryland that does the good uh, fruit wines. It's a place in Maryland that does the festivals and have the good fruit wines. You talking? Are you Lenor? talking about Lingonor? 
Yes, like um, th they have a market. Like, you know, yeah, forget what we do of it. And like, if it's, you know, up to the standard of, you know, mm -hmm. whatever, whatever. People love those wines. They show up to every festival they have. They yeah. sell out of stuff. They know their lane. It it's is it. nothing. They, 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 they produce the a very, they produce a yeah. very solid fruit wine. Their fruit yes, wine is good for fruit wine. And then we had one of the winemakers on the show. They started making drier wines too. Oh, so yeah. they're trying to Definitely. tap into mm -hmm. two different markets. Mm -hmm. So oh. it's it's actually very smart. It is. It's very smart. Yep. I think. I wonder how they're doing now with the whole COVID situation because they are doing very well. The because those festivals, <laughs> yeah, oh, all the Leslie festivals. Leslie, yeah. Leslie yeah. leaned in and said they're doing well. About, yeah. They are actually talking about the revenue that they used to get from mm. those festivals because that is being cut out. So that okay, so big. that is, but okay, so you used to you could go to Ligonor mm -hmm. and you could do uh tasting eleven wines, mm -hmm. eleven, and they would charge you maybe ten dollars. Oh my God, that's great. Oh, right. oh so now, that wasn't even their oh, money maker. Super, oh, oh, wait a second. Wow. Now you go there. It's a seated tasting. And they give you four wines for $15. Oh, okay. And right. up. And up. If you oh, want to taste more fancy. than the four. Oh, oh you fancy, huh? Okay. Right. <laughs> right. 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 They so, because so, they would, because they would for their festivals, they would make like a hundred thousand dollars in a weekend. Yeah, yeah, I was good. That's a yeah. big chunk of their revenue. That's gone. I can't even process that information you just. How gave. would that? How would <laughs> they do that? Because they charge True. an entry fee. Yeah. And uh, and it's all farmland. Just yeah. Oh, and they sell their wine. They sell, and their, they wine. sell their wine. And you yeah. can't buy any. Ooh. You can't bring wine, and you can't bring spirit. And you only can drink their wine. Yeah. And they oh, charge they can't bring wine in. Yep, the vendors. Yep, they charge so vendors a fee. Okay, got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Yep. Just more people. Mm -hmm. yeah. it's, it's a, a lot of people. Volume. A lot of people. Yeah. Got it. People go out there like they would bring tents Tent. and bring their chairs mm -hmm. and, and, and be all there all day, stuff. just drinking mm -hmm. their wine all day. And this is multiple times during the summer. This isn't just like one festival. Yeah. They have mm -hmm. a, oh, no, it was a festival, festival season, a reggae yeah. festival, mm -hmm. a jazz. I mean, they had just a lot of yeah. yeah, all the musics, all the music genres. Yeah. <laughs> all the genres yep. Well, I'm having a margarita because it's margarita day. How about that? Well, I it's saw margarita. that. Is it margarita day? Yeah. It is National Margarita Day. Oh, I'm well, I feel like it's a nice way to break out. And now that and now that tea Capri is y'all know tea Capri, yes, the black tequila. Yeah, yeah, now yeah. now that she's in that? DC, I'm not nervous. So I poured a little more. Like, oh, I can just go get another <laughs> bottle now. I'm excited. Oh, is she at chats now? She is at chats. Okay. Y'all okay. so be down, down the bottle. I don't out. know when I'm gonna get it, but hold it down. Yeah. I saw that I saw it listed in um in black wine lovers. Because mm -hmm. we put all sorts of things in there, not just wine, just beverages, period. Sure. So mm -hmm. I saw that. So yeah. I need to figure out where to get it from because yeah. same thing with like uncle nearest mm -hmm. they don't necessarily have it all in stores you have to actually order it wow. and gotcha. get it. yeah yeah you know same total thing wine saint cloud all that stuff you got to order it surprisingly enough total wine did a black history month um display oh really total wine here in laurel mm -hmm. and they had uncle around. nearest mm -hmm. and they had a couple other black wine makers up front in this up front as you walked into the store on display starting in February. So mm -hmm. I was like, all right, total wine. Mm -hmm. Who's your, uh, Who did they have? Huh? Who did they have um, listed? Cause I, well, cause some of the things that I've heard, cause I know how it is just. Well, Andre Max wine. And all that stuff. Do they um, have McBride sisters up there? Mc, well, they sold out. Yeah. How about, because every black woman, I was I was cracking up. Every black woman came in here wanted black girl magic. Too. Yeah. Every and they just could not keep it on the shelf. Yeah. Because I was watching like she's like, I have to go back and get another case. That woman was running. <laughs> I was cracking up. They had yeah. the name too. 
You know? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Is yeah. that yeah. his name? Black Girl Magic. And it's the season. Yeah. Be blind. Marcus. Oh, you Indiana. know, I wanted to tell y'all somebody in the Black Wine Lovers group brought up something really important. She said that she was in Trader Joe's and I they had that. the McBride sisters. Okay. It was $14.99 mm-hmm. at Trader Joe's. Then she said, where did she go? Did she go to Total Wine? She went she, somewhere. And it, Walmart. She, somebody else went to Walmart and they and, said it was even cheaper at Walmart. But it and, was, and they went to like another store, and it was like twenty dollars. Mm-hmm. So and, there's a variation of prices, and it's crazy. Yep. Well, I'm you know, the but that's all on Black Girl Magic. That's not all on them. That could also it's be. The, no, it's not. Oh, yeah. the but they yeah. like when you taxes too. Well, <laughs> when you when you when you purchase wine as a retailer. <clears throat> Often the brand will give you a recommended pricing. Doesn't mean that you have to stay right, with right. That, that pricing, but for that very reason, because then you really see what the markup is on the wine. So they mm-hmm. ask you to remain competitive. Well, they do that. Some people will in restaurants as well. When they sell to you, they will tell you, you they'll sell it to you Yes. But this mm-hmm. is the not the recommended pricing, but mm-hmm. this is what you need to price it at. Because or you can't sell our wine. Yes, yeah. they will. Mm-hmm. Really? They will, oh, yeah, yeah, they will say that. Oh yeah. They will. Yeah, they will. Yeah. People have said that to me. That yeah, because they mm-hmm. don't. They don't mm-hmm. want that mm-hmm. variation like that because yep. it's reflective at the end on them. You know. Yeah. The mm-hmm. Consumer doesn't realize that it's whomever is selling it that has decided to do that. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, and they're protecting their brand and saying that, you know, as well, because the wholesale cost for McBride Sister Brut Rose is only a couple of dollars under what they're selling it at at Trader Joe's. Mm-hmm. Right. So. You know, the more you buy as a retailer, the cheaper the price. Mm, I get it. You know, mm-hmm. mm. and this is a whole like, nother podcast. This is yeah, so interesting. Exactly. Like, you know, in Montgomery County, because you got Montgomery County itself, and you got all these other counties, in, but in Montgomery County, there's a Montgomery County tax. Yeah. So you, you got that, those three tier systems where you got the wholesale price and you got the um, county selling price and you got the retail price and the restaurant price so I try not to I go outside of Montgomery County to buy wine yeah I understand because <laughs> you got to go to the county store you have to go to the county store I think it's important when you own a restaurant that you should have your prices competitively priced because you want your guests to come back and you want repeat business mm-hmm. you want to mm-hmm. make the money of course but that's where you know your buy the glass stuff comes in you buy yeah. things that yeah. you can have gotten special pricing on so that you you know can be aggressive in pricing those everything else you know two-time markup once you start going three and above for all of that it just it'll sit yeah <laughs> Is that one of the things you do as a wine director? Talk about oh, the pricing? Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I do all that. Yeah. Yeah, I do all of that. I buy everything. I price everything. I do that also for private dining because we have a huge private dining program. It's a really large restaurant. We turned, they say we turned 28. I actually thought we turned 29, but I'm not going to argue with anybody. <laughs> it's not my place. <laughs> Is the day after Valentine's Day is the birthday, but it's a big place. We have 448 seats. Oh, wow. Um, and the main part of the restaurant, you could buy out if you would like, which is probably just within the main restaurant. And with the two private dining space sets that are better inside, it's 448 seats. But then we have another um, space, which is uh, basically a wine shop and private dining space that's right next door. That's another hundred. And in between all of that, there is an indoor atrium Mm -hmm. where we can use for private events as well that we can seat another 500 out there on that. Mm. So 
when we would do things like that and have everything up and running and going, which is usually more holiday and convention time, you have to cut some of it off and have, like if it's dinner time, nighttime, basically just not have the front of the house open because you need to put all your energy into the mm. 500 and maybe the other 100 that's next door, depending upon just how elaborate everything is. And we're one of the only places in the city where whatever is in the main dining room and on the menu, you'd be able to order that and have that for your special event. Mm. Mm. So wow. it's not, yeah. And to be able to do that, you know, our, my, the chef has been there for 17 years, but he's, you know, classically trained, has worked all over Europe, worked in New York, but has worked in high volume event places as well. And mm -hmm. so that is attributed to him to be able to do that. But yeah, I talk to customers and plan out their parties. I'm all of that. I do all of that. Wow. Plus the wine program for the restaurant and and, and all of that and the wine program for private dining so this has been for me with the COVID and pandemic when I tell people it took me a month to reclimatize myself and just kind of just stop that's why because I was I was busy you know, yeah. it was mm -hmm. my yeah. usual day was 12 hours wow. and if we were really busy and had a lot going on 14 hours you know, easy. I mean, wow. I did that for a long time. So now here I am waiting for everything to open up. But in the meantime, I started a consulting business, <laughs> you know, because it's like, okay, I can only do so many more Zoom calls and learn so much because like, okay, what else can I do? Mm -hmm. What else can I offer, right? Um, to everyone and within what we're doing right now. And so there we go. And so what kind of uh, consulting services do you offer? So I do virtual tastings, but I also have a bit of a twist with the virtual tastings. I'm very much into the arts. And I think that there's a correlation between food, wine, um, mm -hmm. and the arts, be it music, literature, um, all of that, you know, spoken word and being able to pair that together with the meal and create an experience for someone. But then there's also the branding side of things and blending wine and helping wineries come up with programming for their company. So I used to do things like that as well. People would come in and hit you up all the time and have you do you know round tables about what their next product should be, mm. you know, and things like that. So. I can do that. But we also, when we had more restaurants, we had proprietary um, brands as well that were in all of the restaurants and I helped with that. So I helped to create and blend those things as well. So I offer those services too. So, so let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. um, a couple of years ago, I went to SOMCON. Mm -hmm. And they had a seminar on the business of wine mm -hmm. in the restaurant. And it was very, especially from the perspective that I was in, it was very eye-opening about how, like the discussion about pricing, which made me think of that. And the other um, business aspects of running a wine program. How did you, aside from like on the job training, where did you where did you learn that? Like who's teaching that? Because All nobody training girl. Nobody That's talks about that. That's how I learned. And you know, depending upon I used to work for Kempton hmm. Hotels hmm. as well. And mm -hmm. I was a wine director um at Kempton Properties. Helios, which was down in Cupertino. And I ran that for several years. And you know, that's that's corporate, corporate, right? right. So I learned there, but each place is different, you know, within their systems and you learn on the job and you have a boss, you have someone 
who mentors you and works with you in that, but you also have your mentors that have been with you along the way. Everybody has their strengths and their weaknesses, and you can talk to them, and as you should be, talking to them about things like that. I still hit my mentors up all the time. When I decided I wanted to do this consulting business and because I was like, I don't know. And should I wait for the restaurant to open? And I hit up my folks. I sure did. You know, Larry Stone is one of my mentors from a long time ago, from the very beginning with me. And I, I emailed and I called and we worked it out because I wasn't sure, you know, mm-hmm. and what are the different scenarios for me, you know, should I do this and work at the restaurant? Can I do that? You know, and yes, you can, Yeah, but you all have to work it out, you know, and yeah. it's a two way mm-hmm. street. And so, yeah, mm-hmm. when I go back to work, I'm still going to be doing my thing. And that is what we worked out. Mm-hmm. So, but because it's such a large place and what we do is so specific. They're mm-hmm. only doing takeout mm-hmm. and uh, meal kits right now. And I get it, I understand. I show up where I need to, you know, mm-hmm. doing videos about Black History Month and doing other things, you know, with wine and stuff for them as mm-hmm. they need me. But right mm-hmm. now they don't need me like that, and that's okay because I'm doing this other thing over here. Yeah, you know it's a lot of, for me to be able to do that. So, are they yeah. are they allowing um, with your meals to go allowing? Um, oh yeah, beverages as well. Oh, yeah, oh, okay. Yeah. And it's um, and you know throughout this whole thing, you know we have been pretty creative. I think in the very beginning there was more of having more high-end stuff available for people to purchase Mm -hmm. and at a discount Mm -hmm. whereas we're not not really doing that anymore you know there's a selection of wines that i curate that rotate for people to buy that are seasonal like they have always been if you're coming into the restaurant looking at the wine list and choosing something to have you know with your meal Mm -hmm. And I do think people are, cocktails are still really big. People love cocktails. They love Mm -hmm. cocktails. So, you know, cocktails to go. Mm -hmm. Um, If it's, you know, not a date night or anything, they're looking at reasonable uh, reasonable priced wines Mm -hmm. to have with their meal, Mm -hmm. right? So I have uh, several different, you know, varying prices for people to choose from. But, you know, I'm, this month has been kind of a bummer because this is the month that I would partner with another chef and we would have a tasting menu for the entire month, curated, you know, wines to go along with that menu and people could come in and have the menu all day long, right? Mm. And then some of those proceeds would go to WOMAD. And mm. so, so that's, but it's good though, because there's been much more of a light shined mm-hmm. um, on everything and there's a lot of variety and people have really gotten the word out about black businesses and black winemakers and just black beverages, period you know, more so than we would have seen two or three years ago, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Can I circle back to um, mentorship? You seem to be big in mentorship and you've mentioned that you have mentors. Um, How does somebody go about finding the right mentor for them? So what I always tell people is if there is someone in a particular field that you admire, reach out to them and ask them to have a conversation. Mm -hmm. There was something that was really big um, a long time ago when we were all coming up, because when I ask people about it now, they don't know what I'm talking about. (laughs) And it was informational interviews. 
when mm-hmm. you were deciding what you wanted to do with yourself, whether you were in high school or in college, you would set up and reach out to someone and have an informational interview with them. In some high schools, the college counselors would be able to help you with that. And in high school, it was the same. And so because we don't always have um, that anymore, because when I ask people about it now, it's not something that's done. But nine times out of 10, when you reach out to that person and ask them to give you a little bit of time because you want to know about what they do, Mm -hmm. people love talking about themselves, Mm -hmm. you know, and about what they do. And that's the start. And that's the beginning. And it doesn't mean that, and see, sometimes we, we have this idea of mentorship as it is something that's long and drawn out someone that's going to be with you throughout your career and your decision making and it's not always like that so what i always like to call it that one person that may have a word for you and when i say word that is the sermon Mm -hmm. the word that Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that speaks to you and resonates with you and you take from that what you will and that word is a thread That thread is a thread within a ribbon that is just continuous and keeps going. And people add to that. Some of those people will be in your life forever. Some of them circle back and you see them again. Some of them you never see again. Then there are those that are just always there, right? Hmm. And that's what mentorship is to me. That's how it shows up for people, Hmm. you know? And... um, but that's the best thing. Tell that person you'd like to have a conversation with them. Reach out to them in an email. You mm. know, I think it's really interesting what you're doing and fascinating. I'd, I'd like to hear more about what you do. And nine times out of 10, that person will take 30 minutes or an hour out of their life to talk to you about what they do. Mm. And that's how it starts. You know, and then you figure out whether it's interesting to you or not. And then you add to that you know but what's really wonderful right now is that we have opportunities to mentor people right whereas Mm -hmm. it's much Mm -hmm. more at your fingertips that way so you know when i am when i meet people um you know young people even people that are are already in um a profession and because sometimes people say you know when i retire i I really am interested in wine. I would really like to just sit and study. And I don't know if I would do anything with it or not. I tell them to go on. I give them the information, Mm -hmm. right? It's not my place to hold all this back and keep all this in. If someone is interested, why not tell them where to go and what to do to explore it and think about it? And that's the thing now. We can we can do all sorts of things in wine, you know. We can do yep. tours, we can teach people, we can do, you know, tastings for people, we can create all kinds of experiences, you know, around wine. But what I really think is going to be the push is going to be people making wine. Mm. Uh, being in that part of the industry because you know with wine being such that it is um within hospitality because you don't have to work at a restaurant you can work at a winery you can work within hospitality that way um there are sommeliers that are working now at wineries and working within hospitality and, and helping people you know, that way, doing the same thing that they would have done on a restaurant floor, but working with just one brand or multiple brands, depending upon who they're going to go work for. So there's other stuff to do, or you can go and work for a retailer, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, because those people are are sommeliers as well. They're just on a retail floor, just different Mm parts, different space. That's it. And as, um, uh, what's her name? 
um, shoot in New York. She said she just got a quick turn time. That's all when you come. <laughs> a quick return time table time when you come into a retail space you know so they're they're touching and dealing with you know more people yeah and mm -hmm. quicker right <laughs> so I was like I can dig it you absolutely right you know I get it. <laughs> I, it, it hey she was right I was like all right now mm -hmm. I was like yep that's what it is but yeah, I see us making wine and doing stuff like that. That's awesome. Because it's available. Yeah. You know, it is available. There are people that want to offer that to folks, young people or people, period, that are interested, you know? Yeah. So, and that's important. But like I said, if you don't see yourself or no one is willing to show you that that's what that's like, mm -hmm. how do you know that you can do it? Yeah. Or that you even have an interest in it, mm -hmm. right? But that could be for anything. Any anything. profession. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Not just wine, anything. Right. Yeah. Exactly. You know? Yeah, hmm. anything. So Tanya, this part of our show is a little fun. <clears throat> I'll ask everybody a couple of questions and you just give me the first thing that comes to your mind. And the first one is for everybody. Name one of your guilty pleasures. Ooh, guilty pleasure. Um, the recent that I've really been able to, to do is, because I love caviar. And so now it's like, okay, if it's two o'clock in the morning and I have some caviar in the fridge, I'm going to eat it. <laughs> now, um, serious. The fact that that's even a thing. I like, was like, wow. Like, like I just happen to have caviar in the pleasure. fridge. But well, why like, is it yeah, guilty though? That well, ain't because, guilty. Well, because it's caviar, truffles, things like that. We are taught that they are special and should only be enjoyed at certain times. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not two o'clock in the morning if you up. <laughs> Joy Jackman and talking on the phone and you hung. But you just have them in your fridge. Yeah, well, but see, but I, what I did this time around, I was like, forget it. I'm going to buy some. I'm going to have it in there if I want mm. it. Whatever. Okay. And I allowed okay. myself to do that. Whereas yes. I usually only do it if I'm out and celebrating and with friends and things like that. And yeah. I bought some and I bought a fair amount during my birthday month in January, I was like, yeah. you know, we, we in COVID, I yeah. usually, you know, celebrate all month long. I'm all like, I'm going to do this all year. Okay? Yeah, I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to do this all year. As you wish. Yes. Yes. So, <laughs> Tanisha year. wish it was. <laughs> but, so mine's going to be super dumb, not compared to that. I'm like, what's on Netflix? Like, I don't even know what to say. <laughs> like, guilty pleasure, watch random movies on Netflix. I don't know. Get, girl, give me a little more time. Well, that. but you know what, though? But that's also a guilty pleasure because we usually sure. don't have time to do stuff like that, yeah. right? Because we're so busy. Mm -hmm. yeah. We don't take yeah. time to just unplug. Mm -hmm. and yeah. Just That's look so at the true. screen and just take mm -hmm. that all in because we're so busy. Yeah. Right? Not that we're not busy now. I mean, we are, but in a different kind of way. Yeah. Like, you know, usually you're like, oh, I ain't got time to do this. Mm -hmm. I got to get up so early in the morning. I'm yeah. going to get caught and stuck. And yeah. I'm going to binge on this. And I don't mm -hmm. need to do this. I got to get up in the morning, right? <laughs> now it's like, okay, I'm going to binge. I'm going to watch a Nollywood movie after I get off the show. There you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Glennis, what's yours? Luxury travel. There you go. Okay. That, there you is know, one. I, I'm gonna go, and I, once we're done with this, I'm going to say, because I, I have not seen you yeah. online. Because I'll be, I'll be looking. Because you're right. I'm like, where's she at? Where's she going? Where's she going? <laughs> Is it her birthday? Where's she at? What's she doing? Uh, Glennis be on the secret flex now. For real, man. Like, Glennis be on the secret flex. She is <laughs> not telling anyone. She no, got her no, out and come back. Style, she <laughs> gone. No, she come back, she come back no. fully tanned <laughs> and with new wines and like, oh, y'all got this rum that y'all should really try. Um, uh -huh. We're like, where'd you get it from? She's like, um, it's from a cave um, off the ground and um, 
a remote island off of Barbados. What? Man, let me tell you something. This I'd be glad when Co Corona take her tail because it's really putting a damper in that guilty pleasure. But um, I was going to be traveling for my 55th this year to the Maldives, and that got canceled. So mm, that's see, that's fabulous. Now, I, 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 I'm still places hard. I've seen. I've seen Perfect. online. That's what I mean. <laughs> I've, seen I, I've never gone Sad either, but I'm like, well, right. I'm like, one of the most beautiful places I've seen. Pictures. Right. Mm -hmm. yes. Oh, I'm going to redo that trip again. I mean, literally everybody deposits. The whole thing was planned out and oh, man. COVID-19. Mm. So, you know, that was too much money to and too far for people yeah. to wrap their minds around yeah. being in a plane for almost 20 some hours. You, you know, you're up and down with connections. Right. With, right. Right. Yeah. To be in a plane for 20 some hours and you're dealing with a pandemic that's kicked, that's airborne. So I don't want to do it. So, but, but yeah, once yeah. In a we know you're not doing it. Yeah. No, yeah. we're not doing it. I'm just taking short trips to Jamaica. To Listen, Cause you it. take your own food on the plane. Oh, not when I do. You're not. You're not doing. No. You're not doing. You're not doing pandemic flying. And now, when I know when I I don't on those trips because I'm trying to find business class or better on those twenty some hour flights because it's just too far to be sitting in coach for me. So that's why that's my guilty pleasure. Oh, I got it. So if Sarita has the ten thousand dollar question, then <laughs> what's your today. guilty pleasure? <laughs> You asked uh, everybody, what's yours? Mine okay. is a super simple. Everybody knows I do this. I watch bad black movies on TV. <laughs> I've and seen that. and I've and seen then I'll Instagram all about it. I mean, it's it's horrible, but I find so much pleasure out of it. And they're like, why they pick that wig for that girl? I don't <laughs> oh, know that. that hair is all wrong. Exactly. <laughs> Um, why they but that way that man? Like, why does he have that wig on? Like, we all have exactly. his mold in his life. And then it comes like why? down, right? Right. right? right. Why does he now have cornrows? Like, why? Oh is my god, my Lord. And then the cornrows be thing. sitting up. I'm like, oh, yeah, man. Man. You already so know where, about, where my I limit is. I do have a boundary, and my boundary is Tyler Perry. I gave up. I have to give up. I had to stop. It was too bad. Oh, he, writing is too been, terrible. He's gotten so, dinged a lot in the press so, too about those wigs on. on they're his, awful. They're yeah. awful. He's yeah. terrible. He's he says he playing has black audience, people with wigs anyway. Yeah. What his audience wants. That's what he Ooh, said. Child. Yeah, he they did. don't want some wigs though. But I mean, old <laughs> wigs be bad. Like even the wigs he wears, those be trash. Misha is on the wigs. <laughs> Right, and I shouldn't be right. I'm the one who shouldn't be. We should have a wig watch. I shouldn't be. I should. I should be the one to shut up. Y'all, funny. Leslie, what's your guilty pleasure? Yeah, mine is so you know on the East Coast we have Utz potato chips. Yes, and it's specifically Utz sweet dill potato chips. What? And you can only find it some there's a there's a gas station on the corner near my house. I won't even <laughs> drive that way anymore. I can't really think I was not gonna lie. Oh my god! I stop there, so I just I take a different route. So you I are won't kidding be kidding me. No, but you know no. what though? That's the thing. You can get like regular potato chips that are sweet dill and stuff. Now all kinds of stuff: jalapeno, yeah, wasabi. Yeah. Nope. They didn't go on all, like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. even the kettle chips. I'm all like, oh, okay. <laughs> I got some, some wasabi kettle chips. I forget the name of the maker. They were good though. Yeah. Hmm. I was like, ooh. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. big thing here is roasted chicken chips. And I don't understand. Say what now? What? Really? So every brand here does a roasted chicken potato chip. Huh. And I don't get it. I'm like, I, if I want to have a roasted chicken, like I'll just eat a roasted chicken. Yeah. Like I don't want to eat a chip. Like oh, it. okay, the spices yeah. from the roasted yeah. chicken. Yeah, yeah. Pretend mm -hmm. like you eating, huh? Yeah. Yeah. So it doesn't <laughs> taste F O W L though. <laughs> I'll just eat the chicken. Yeah. You know, it, it doesn't taste chicken. You know that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's not my go-to. Oh number my gosh. Chip gosh! Barbecue every time. Barbecue chip is the number one chip. Barbecue. Then maybe a salt and vinegar. Yeah, that too. Okay, salt and vinegar is my jam. Yeah. I can't. I avoid salt and vinegar if I'm having my um if I'm having my caviar. I've done that before. Oh, that caviar. sounds wonderful, actually. Yeah. But you know what though? But if you're gonna do it, 
you put you some uh sour cream and some cream fresh Ooh, or something on it. Girl, you are speaking my like language. That. Holy God. Well, yeah, that's that's happening. That's happening. Listen, happening. we're gonna have to end this podcast. Right? <laughs> <laughs> right. And I'm saying like I could go eat it. It is one in the morning. I can't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so later today we'll, we'll get on that. yeah <laughs> okay next question if you received seven thousand dollars what would you do with it Glenda's getting her ticket to the Maldives I or somewhere you right seven thousand dollars you know I am such a Capricorn I would probably pay my car off oh that's probably what I would do but that's not that's not you're so responsible me it's very responsible that's that's that's, we'll see i'm a capricorn that's why (laughs) Um, because if you pay that bill off you have more money to do other things with this is true right that's my rationale Um, (laughs) (laughs) but if it was more money than seven thousand dollars i would i would probably take a trip if we could take trips yeah and I would take my mom with me and I would take my mom with me on a trip to Italy. Mm, we would travel. Nice. If mm. I got if I got a windfall like that, we would just mm-hmm. we go travel. Girl, holla at me. I'll come meet you in Italy. We, 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 we go travel. <laughs> that's just a train ride away. Yeah, yeah. that's what we We authorized. I can go. You can call yeah. and get uh, one of those villas he was talking about. Uh-huh. I know, huh? No. They kind of yeah. falling apart though. I don't want to take all my money and put all my money into that. Then I ain't got no money. Oh, yeah. You said windfall. You're like, we can turn and return this money, but come on, yeah. come on. Hey. let's go. Windfall, yeah. girl. Listen, windfall mean different things to different people. You say hey. two people like, it's a windfall. It's a windfall, girl. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we, we call that the financial blessing. Mm. Right. <laughs> From Ohio. Mm-hmm. That's right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Leslie, That's what, right. what would you do with the 7K, Leslie? I think I would do a road trip, mm, okay. um, but I would get like the real tricked out RV mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. with the little, you know, and then you had the car pulled behind there. Okay. And, and with, you know, everything super size in the RV and just travel the country. My goal has always been to go to all 50 states. Oh, nice. I'm close. Um, but this would be, especially now in COVID, what have you, then I could stay in my RV mm. and then I would have, um, because I don't like do laundry mats or campsite that well. Um, so I would have somebody <laughs> in each city Glamper. Glamper. My, yeah, to come and get my laundry and stuff. <laughs> and I'll then this kid out the RV with a washer and dryer. <laughs> I I don't want to do that I mean somebody else could do that for me oh that's hilarious (laughs) so that's what I would do that's cool Glennis what's your answer I told you I would get that um business class or first class ticket on Emma to go somewhere because man (laughs) that 8380 with that Mm -hmm. bar and that and all the drink I was drinking Louis the 14 yeah that thing is the best I'm just buying some packing cubes and the business <laughs> class ticket, and I'm she is out of here. I'm sitting just like this. Um, I'll take some more. In the, I'll take some more. Just keep on coming. Don't even ask me. Just keep coming by my seat. I don't even want to get off the plane. <laughs> just pour it for me. Just, how about you just leave a bottle? Leave <laughs> a bottle for me. I'll take care of it. And yeah. All right, Tanisha, what's yours? Oh, I already said it like seven what? times as y'all was talking. Oh, I told you I was getting light pulling both times. Oh, we still love oh, that. Oh, okay. hear that? I, you ain't oh, said I, that said, today. I said that today. No, I said that today. Why? Oh, yeah. oh, okay. Sorry, I said that under y'all. Because okay. I already was getting the fancy. I already was getting the bottle of two bottles of DRC, one to drink now, and then one to age a little bit. Okay. And right. then, yeah. Okay. We fixing it up. Um, mingle, ready to mingle. We got to get it. For me, I am getting. <laughs> Hit you a for me, I'm getting an Airbnb. <laughs> Um, on a beach or a lake no let's do a beach a beach house airbnb for like two weeks i'm coming that, to visit that, that, that comes with a chef hey, and it comes, yeah, with, yeah, it comes, with, chef. It comes mm-hmm. with a glennis too because i'm coming i mean like the house is on the beach like there's on no the walking beach. blocks like right on the water yeah that's what it's i would do yeah. and you have your own you have your it. own dock 
Yeah. Right. Exactly. With a boat out there? With is there a boat, boat or a jet ski out there? There you okay. go. Yeah. Yeah. See, see, now y'all see my vision. Y'all see my yeah. vision. There you go. Mm. Would okay. you bring friends? I mean, well, of course, if, of course, yeah. the beach house is going to be massive. So, yeah. All right. Or just leave the key under the mat. <laughs> but she said all. But she said all are welcome. Right. Ooh, a select Ooh, few. Not all. A select. A right. select. Mm. Yeah, girl, we, girl, we don't like everybody. Not, I don't we know do everybody's like everybody. COVID habits. You know. There you go. Uh, <laughs> oh, we talking okay. about COVID times? No, this is all. This is after COVID times. Oh, the, right. all this is after. You're right. After. You're right. Right. All right, next question. What was the last item you ordered from Amazon? Last item I ordered. Um, the last item I ordered oh, let me look. I was can... a, um, um, it was a tripod stand. Oh, me too. Tripod stand for my Is the tripod, mine is tall with the light, with the backlight. No, no. I got one of those that, I had one of those already. Mm -hmm. I bought this for um an outdoor shoot oh nice and um i wound up not having to use it at all because the other person brought one okay. i was like oh okay so i had mine mm -hmm. but i didn't have to use it gotcha. and so yeah gotcha. that was the last that was the last thing i bought yeah. glennis what you buy it was a 2021 nexi go stream cam so okay. it's a little, I don't know if y'all can see that. It's no, a little can't see it. with a little light that goes on. Yeah, I'm sorry. And I haven't taken it out the um, package yet. Ain't that trifling? Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> in, in due time, in due time. <laughs> do you, do you like your, um, your halo light? No, Three. that's why, that's why I got this. Cause it, this is a better light. This light right here. Just so it, it's cute, but yeah, uh, it's all in my glass. I had one of those little ones too, and, and it didn't goes, do anything. Okay. Yeah, and it goes. The big ones do that too, though. They 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 are reflective. You know, I can't wear my glasses with mine. Right. Um. So yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Because you get the you yeah get the glare. glare. Mm -hmm. and then you yeah. got the rings in your eyes. Yeah, and it just I doesn't look mine. good. This thing to the it's side. a great light, but yeah. It, I get it in the wine glasses and stuff. Oh mm -hmm. yeah, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All the way off to the side, and it's like, what about right? right. Wow. Tanisha right. and Leslie, what about y'all? A ring light and um, cable chargers, phone chargers. Okay. I got um, uh, makeup remover wipes. Oh, okay. Those mm -hmm. and um, and a um, a Pilates bar. Oh, okay. Wait, what's the Pilates bar? Yeah, what's that? Um, girl, show us. Go get it. <laughs> you ain't got to go get it, girl. <laughs> Wait, no, I'm not. <laughs> you know, she put her hands down like, you finna see this example, okay? You finna see this it's, example with my it has It has the stir, because, you know, I've been really, I've been so torn between getting a Peloton or getting- well, You better get whole, that Peloton at the Or the, the whole Pilates- you know contraption thing oh yeah yeah so yeah. i said let me start small and it's basically it's a little bar you screw it together but it has leg straps to it oh. so oh. it kind of yeah. it's it's like pilates on a cheap okay but you know what though i'm gonna tell you i it's used to do pilates when i could i love the reformer getting on the machine oh right see that's what i was thinking yes. about mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. love that and you feel good <laughs> afterwards and it gives you a workout but yeah. Venice, do you have a peloton because that's what I that's where that's why i was late my last class i was like oh god i only got 10 minutes let me throw this hat on and throw this shirt <laughs> on this, um workout you know bro that's my little workout but i was like oh i love it you like it i love it i mean because you get pretty much you don't have pilates because you get a lot of classes with it as well mm -hmm. so they do bar now they have a bar class i love oh, bar. I, I love so, bar so mm -hmm. that's part of one of the classes you got strength cardio cycling weight lifting so i stacked my classes so like today i did 15 minutes full body stretch mm -hmm. um i did 30 minute bob marley ride with Dennis Moore and he did all of Bob Marley. Well, it, within 30 minutes and curated the songs and talk about black history and the meaning behind mm -hmm. the rise. This I said, who raised this white boy? Because what? <laughs> I did his hip hop right I was like, I don't learn some new stuff. I was 
looks like who raised him? That's what I posted. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, what else did I do? And I, you know, weightlifting. Oh, mm. it's a full body workout. So I mean, how does that work? Because you're when you do that, you're not on the bike, right? Well, see, there's okay. So the you have you you can just pick your classes, right? Now there is one that is like a boot camp where you are you cycle for five minutes, well, five to ten minutes, then you get off the bike and you weight lift, and then you get back on the bike and you ride again. Mm. Um, or after you do your ride. You can do a ride that's um, you can do arm toning where you're just sitting because it comes with two weights in the well weights in the back and one to three pounds and you can do um, arm toning while you're on the bike too. Wow. So then they have intervals. They have like a thirty minute class with intervals where you're sitting on the bike and they stop you stop riding. Some people still get move their legs, but you're lifting as well or you just full strength lift dead lifting weights or using your body as um, resistance and then there's bands too they're they're resistant band classes i mean it, mm. it's worth wow. every dollar it is worth wow. it. it's worth it no finance uh if you want to finance the bike no finances and you can pick your limp or your term no financing so hmm. and then the, you know like the membership fee is just as cheap if you had it's cheaper than if you had a gym membership got it mm. for all that access because sometimes i'm like this fool talking to me. I know how to slow down. Boy, shut up. <laughs> and breathe. I was like, he was right at me. I was like, is he talking to me? Or she talking to me? That's why I, I, I swear. I was like, y'all peeping through this damn camera. <laughs> <laughs> no way you know how to slow down. But but I love it. And then there's all these communities too. So, you know, there's a Black Girl Magic Peloton community. Oh, wow. There's a Black Peloton Riders community. Then there's for like, we have a Delta Peloton community. Then we there's also a Howard, a H, we call it HU Bison Crew um, community. And we just motivate you. everybody. We're going to swarm on this ride. So everybody start riding. We high five each other on the bike. Oh, that's so nice. Mm -hmm. It keep you motivated. You're like, get up, come take this seven o'clock class. Cause there ain't no way in hell I'd be getting up taking no seven o'clock class if I wasn't shamed into it by my peers. I'm telling you right now. <laughs> <laughs> you at home like that's on demand you know, yeah. you know I, I, it is but sometimes you just don't feel like getting your ass out to bed yeah ever mm -hmm. yeah so definitely not at seven mm -hmm. i'm like you know what that ride gonna be there 10 and because then you gotta get up a little earlier to get 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 right take your vitamins get that mm -hmm. glass of juice or whatever <laughs> gotta get yeah. these bones moving and stuff oh Put my lord so, our pass but it, hmm. but it's so well. I, I've, I've, lost, <laughs> I've lost ten. I'm like I've gained twenty pounds since I had I had gained since last March when COVID started, and by the time I got my bike, I was like, uh, uh and these twenty pounds, mm -mm, Corona, you is a damn lie. And I've already lost ten to fifteen of those pounds back. There you go. That's um, awesome. Mm -hmm. I, that I, is ooh, awesome. For that. Yeah, you know how I am about clothes. I was like, I ain't buying no new wardrobe. The devil is a lie. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Meanwhile, we finna stretch everything out. There you go. Hey, all right. We just gonna widen this up. We just gonna widen this up. So we don't have to fasten none of these pants. Just pull them up. I don't want. I can't give up. You know, good. You know, cremant and you know, it's a good sparkles, but I can't do it in good wine. I can't. So I got to do. Mm. Girl, get moving. Fasting is hard when you at home. Child. Because <laughs> mm. 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 like, oh <laughs> usually I can do that and drop it like that. Yeah, no, not now. Yeah. No, because you, you, and I didn't realize how much exercise I was actually getting. I know. Mm. Well, you know, mm -hmm. parking at the train station, running yep. up and down the metro steps, yep. walking to and from my building. Walk, you know, that was a lot of exercise. Once yep. I stopped that, that way it was like boop, boop, boop. Because then yeah. I was still eating the same. Like, right. Your appetite didn't change. Output is totally, because that yep. refrigerator be <laughs> producing you was like, hey, bitch, you ain't been back here five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and you be bored. Like, you eat when you bored. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, exactly. Oh, I'm hungry. He's like, no, you're not hungry. You just mm -hmm. eat. Like exactly. Ago. Like you ain't even sat down from the first food. First food, like, right? No, and no. like I don't know about y'all, but I watch a lot more TV and what's on TV. A bunch of commercials that tell you to oh, eat food. food. So yeah. it's like, oh well, I, I need something to eat now. And I love popcorn. God knows, I love. Yeah. Popcorn. Yep. Oh my goodness, popcorn yeah. is my number two yeah. snack. 
potatoes yeah. always be number one. And let me tell you, I, you said you talked about guilty pleasures. Like, now this is a guilty pleasure that I have. And COVID, <laughs> I was eating unicorn lollipops like they was just a dime a dozen. I would order 48 at a time. What is that? Many what? unicorn lollipops. Oh my God, they're the best thing ever. I'm going to need more information. Yeah, I'll what is that? Hold on, I'm going to have to Google that. Many unicorn lollipops. Oh my God. Unicorn lollipops. I know my, the Amazon guy was like, who the hell is eating all this damn candy? Me. My oh, people. those. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, oh, <laughs> Selena, that's another question. Like, if you do guilty pleasures again, food guilty pleasures. Oh, okay. yeah, sure. Others, Absolutely. Like food ones. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah. That's all right. So, this is the last question, and it's just for Tanya. Okay, Tanya, you get a standing ovation after a speaking event. And this is post COVID. So, thousands of people in the audience, right? Thousands. Um, and, right. <laughs> and Standing ovation, you go back to your dressing room. What bottle are you drinking to celebrate? And what song do you play? I want a bottle of Salon Champagne. Mm -hmm. And oh God, what song would I play? Um, oh shoot. I had it in my head because I thought about this earlier. Hold on. Because <laughs> I know the group and What's the group? Maybe we can help you. It's um is this it's 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 house and it's house uh, music. It, it's a group uh, uh, uh. called um the Shapeshifters and it's not them singing, it's it's a black vocalist, and I've forgotten the name. Just the fact that you said house has done my soul yeah. right. That is great. Okay. <laughs> well, this Six podcast sisters. was great. <laughs> Hold on. And it's, it's, it's an older song from them. They call it Lola's Theme, and that's the extended version. And I extended only versions. just realized that that was the name of the song because <laughs> David Harness <laughs> uh, from the Elements a uh, group of folks, all in people would always play it. I'm like, all right, love this song, right? Love this track. Mm -hmm. And he played it for Frankie Knuckles' birthday like a month ago because they had, they had Service Girl started like seven in the morning and went until three o'clock in the afternoon Wow. I danced my ass off. Wow. Get it? Get it? Mm, mm. <laughs> That's like, you know. Yeah, it's called Lola's Theme. Lola's Theme. It's called oh, Lola's I already theme. pulled it up. I'm going to play it as soon as we done. Yeah, I'm already on my spot. Right, I'm going to play it as I get ready for bed. And um, that's what I. Oh, yep, yeah, I found it. Yeah. yeah awesome. I'm a different person turn my world around mm -hmm. and that's that's one of the lyrics out of it chorus and I love um it. and i am mm -hmm. you know i'm a different person completely the other one would have been sylvester's you make me feel oh well real. that's that's I love that too. that is a great song <laughs> that's a that's, that's an a, awesome song that's a great song too you know mm -hmm. yeah that's a great song too but yeah Man, Tanya, this was a spectacular interview. Seriously. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for Thank having you. me. You know, Thank of course. So I've been listening to y'all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, girl, don't say that. And you, uh, wait, 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 <laughs> and you and still showed up. You know we shot, <laughs> right. Oh. Well, thank God. <laughs> and, then, and, and when you all would be cutting up is when my mother would hear, who is oh, that? No. Who are they talking about? <laughs> Oh, I'm like, mom, they're wine people. They're black ladies. It's all good. <laughs> like, what are they talking about? What? I was like, it's all good. It's for the culture. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. Oh, my goodness. So it's... she she caught y'all on a, it was a late night. Oh, oh, God. God. oh, oh God. God. Yeah, mom, listen to it after dark, girl. Oh, you said yeah, one of those. And she was like, what? what, what? 
I was like, and I was cracking up. I thought it was funny. Ray probably. <laughs> I thought it was funny. Oh, I'm God. like, all right now. <laughs> Tanya, tell everybody where they can follow you and if you have anything coming up. So you can follow me on Twitter at Noir Samoye. You can follow me on Instagram at Noir Samoye. And if you are on Facebook, it is just Tony Phipps and Noir Samoye, N O I R S O M M E L I E R. And it'll pop up and it'll say, Dame Tonya Pitts. And that is because before, well, actually, in the middle of the pandemic, I actually got inducted into Les Dames de Scoffier, which is a food and wine society that is international. And they have chapters um, all over the country as well as all over the world. And that was something that was in play before COVID happened. It's been happening for the last couple of years and um, it finally happened. And it was at the urging of the wine mistress. She's like, girl, you better put this shit up there. <laughs> <laughs> that sound, and she said it exactly like yes, that. I know she did. I heard it, I heard it, yes, I heard it in her voice yeah. and everything. <laughs> Just yeah. like that. Yeah, put that shit up there. I was like, yeah, that's it. girl, that's I was like, okay, and I did it. And so, I love it. you know, That's and some wonderful. people are just like, so do I need to bow down? I'm like, no, <laughs> you know, is it like being knighted? I'm like, I'm like, know. actually you do. And you need to kiss this ring. <laughs> 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 like, please respect. Listen, bend the knee. Okay. Right. So. Respect the, uh, you know, respect the, the, the title, respect it. All right. <laughs> so, yeah. So some people are like, what is that? It's exactly what it says. You see that in there? Lay Dame Discoffier. There we go. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So fantastic. Anyway. Nice. Lovely. Awesome. Love it. Love it. Oh, Leslie Tanisha Glitz. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What else you got going on? Oh, when we done with Black History Month, I got Women's Month. Mm. And of mm -hmm. course, I have always, I got my ladies, but that's all my ladies. Mm -hmm. Everybody. Yeah. Oh, you see folks from the month before, they're going to be there too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah just, mix it, just mix it all in, girl. Mix it all in. Yes, indeed. No. So, <laughs> yep. Mm. So I got that coming up. So cool. moderating some stuff and we'll see. I'm probably be doing, might do some things on Instagram too. If I could pull it all off. We'll see. So. Awesome. Please. Nice, nice. Awesome. Right. Leslie, Glennis, yeah. Tanisha, anything y'all want to share? No, no, not today. Not all at once, girl. Hey. I don't share enough. <laughs> my brain has already shut down. I'm sorry. Or so I, funny, um, Tanisha. My, my brain has already shut down. Girl, yeah. you know you up. You are <laughs> not sleepy. Not. You I are not home. sleepy. Mm -hmm. You ain't sleepy. I've been drinking. <laughs> I've, I've been sleeping. drinking. I've been drinking. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh. But ladies, that is our show. Thank you so, so much. Well, that's our show, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to the Swirl Suite. Don't forget to vote for us in the Taste Awards. Don't forget to follow Tanya. Follow us individually. And most importantly, share this episode with everybody who loves podcasts, everybody who loves wine, and leave us a comment on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to our show. Cheers.